Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Today's video is actually going to be 55 moving hacks because I'm in the process of moving. I'm going to be moving out this Friday, Saturday, one of them. And it's currently Wednesday, so. Oh my god, it's coming up too quickly, what the heck. So I'm going to be giving you 55 moving hacks, um, also you can probably tell by the sound of my voice, I'm sick, I'm sorry about that. Also, if you can hear the fan, I'm sorry, but it's also 30 degrees Celsius in here, so we're not turning it off, sorry. Yeah, let's just get on with the video. So number one is pretty well known at this point, it's basically just when you have a cupboard full of clothes all hung up and you don't want to individually take every single one down, fold it and put it in a box. So you just get a black garbage bag and put it over. You know what I'm talking about. I know you do. You've probably watched three of these videos at least by now if you're looking for moving hacks. So you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, if you're just watching it because it's my video and you're subscribed to me then like you're a real one. But you know when you just get the, the black garbage bag or it doesn't have to be black garbage bag and you put it over the clothes <sighs> I'll give you a photo of what it looks like anyways hack number two pack a separate suitcase for your personal immediate essentials so like medication toiletries you know like your hairbrush and you know feminine products clothes makeup deodorant you know fresh underwear and you know just basic stuff like that that you're gonna need on hand um, and not packed away where you spend hours searching through every single box to try and find the things that you need right away so you just pack a separate suitcase just for yourself the things that you need immediately and not to be packed away to go along with that it's best to pack a separate suitcase tub basket it doesn't really matter what it is I just I personally wouldn't really have it as a box because it would get mixed up with like actual moving boxes but something else where you're packing immediate essentials like toilet paper and towels and soap you know shampoo and conditioner sheets like bed sheets all-purpose cleaner and stuff like that for like bits that you're gonna have to wipe down when you move in because it wasn't clean proper and just basic stuff like that the fourth thing is again the same thing a separate immediate essentials pack for pets so if you have pets this is a big one you'll probably need your immediate essentials for like litter if you have a excuse me Naya speak of the devil um, for like litter cat litter or like their food or toys to keep them entertained and less stressed in the move you know it's just stuff like that so um, you could switch that out for kids if you don't have pets but you have kids it would be the same sort of thing where you would need toys to keep them entertained nappies wipies you know all that sort of stuff so if you don't have pets but you have kids switch that out if you don't have kids but you have pets then switch that out you know what I mean um, yeah number five is put cling wrap underneath the lid of something that has the potential to spill you can see that ow you can see that when I travel with my gel and stuff, it's already in a Ziploc bag because it has the tendency to spill. It also has cat fur all over it, which is great. Thank you so much, Naya. The only reason it might not work so well with this is because, as you can see, this has a tube going through, so you'd need to poke another hole into the cling wrap, which kind of defeats the purpose. But this is just the closest thing near me that is as close as I can get to, like, a jar. You'd obviously do this with, like, actual jars so like say you had like a an open jar of jam or something like that and it for whatever reason had the tendency to spill put the cling wrap over it then screw the lid back on and you got a nice tight seal no spillages the sixth hack is get boxes for free don't pay for them do not pay for boxes okay that's just a waste of money especially because moving in itself as it is is already quite the expense 
So don't pay for boxes, just call up different companies like your local supermarket or clothing store, anything like that, and just kindly ask them if they can put aside the boxes and that you can pick them up later on. Usually nine times out of ten they'll say yes, if they don't then just pick a different store and call them up. Don't pay for boxes, literally just call up stores and ask them for their boxes, used empty boxes, and if not, usually around stores and stuff like that there's a cardboard only bin and they'll just be filled with a bunch of empty boxes you can just go and take boxes out of that it's not an issue and it will save you a lot of money number seven is pretty straightforward don't buy groceries before you move you should be using what you have before you move all your perishable items you should be planning meals ahead of time just so you know that you're using up all the groceries that are left because there's nothing worse than having to move a whole bunch of food when you don't need to. Also, you run the risk of having those items perish in the travels of moving. So I would just use up what you have and maybe if you really have nothing, then maybe just get takeaway for that night or whatever. And then when you move, then do a big grocery shop. Don't buy groceries before you move. It's not worth it. And it's a lot harder on you. Number eight is pretty straightforward cull before you move so get rid of all your stuff that you don't use anymore that you don't need anymore that you don't want anymore before you move don't wait until after you move because then you know right now that it's never going to happen if you don't do it now it won't happen i know that you'll say that you'll just do it in the next house you won't believe me you won't just do it before you move. Sort your items into things that you're keeping, that you're selling, that you're donating, and that you're plainly just throwing away. Maybe it's expired makeup, then just throw it away. Also, if you wanted to keep aside a pile for like friends and family, where it's makeup that you can't donate or sell because you've used it before, you can still give it to friends, and I'm sure they would appreciate it. So you could put a little pile aside for those sort of moments as well. Number nine is to throw away all those junk papers that you have laying around before you move. So things like old notes from, say you have kids and they just get a bunch of notes from school, old notes that you don't need anymore from something that was three years ago that you still got the note of, throw them away. I know a lot of parents just have the habit of just having this stack somewhere in the house of all the old notes and documents that they don't need anymore and they just it just piles up I know my parents used to have a stack like that it's just you don't need them anymore you don't need to find a place for them in the new house just get rid of them shred them rip them up I don't care what you do with them just get rid of them because you don't need them anymore and you don't need it cluttering the next house number 10 is label your boxes thoroughly don't be vague so if you have 12 different boxes that all say kitchen on them how are you supposed to know which one has the spoons and which one has the plates you won't i mean you could jiggle it around a bit and probably find out but that's a bit risky because then you could have everything shattered basically label thoroughly say in one box you have all of your cups all of your plastic cups metal spoons and can openers I don't know. I don't know why you'd pack a box like that, but just say that's what it is. Write each of those things on the box so when you're looking for those things, you know exactly where they are, what box they're in, and what box to open so you're not opening 12 different boxes that are all labelled kitchen. Okay? Saves you a lot of time. Be thorough, not vague. Number 11 is colour coding your boxes. So you can assign a colour to each room in the new house. So say kitchen is green and the lounge room is orange and your bedroom is purple. I don't know. It's a really good idea to colour code your boxes. So if you have movers or even if you don't have movers and you just have other family helping you, they can just see the colour and know exactly where it needs to go. They don't have to try and look for the label and read it and be like, oh, that goes in that room, I think. It'll just be there right in front of their eyes plain sight orange okay i know what room that goes into makes sense makes sense number 12 is make your bed as soon as you move it into the new house as soon as it's moved in and you have all the sheets and everything make your bed straight away because i'm telling you the last thing you want to do after having a huge day of moving is make your goddamn bed and I'm telling you right now you probably won't do it you'll probably just sleep and crash on the mattress because you'll be exhausted that you just won't have the energy to do anything else 
I'm guilty of doing this, just make your bed as soon as you can because right then and there you'll likely have more energy than you will at the end of the day. So may as well just make it and it also make you feel more productive when you're moving things into your bedroom and you'll see that your bed is already made. It'll just be another thing ticked off the list, another thing not to worry about at the end of the day and you'll feel a whole lot better about it. Trust me, just do it. Number 13 is a bit of a weird one but when you're moving and in the process of packing and stuff like that put a little container it doesn't have to be big or anything just a small little like acrylic container just put one of those aside on like a window seal or something somewhere because when you're in the process of packing and moving and moving everything out of the house i guarantee you you're bound to find so much just loose change around that have fallen between cracks of lounges and fallen onto the ground and are just hiding places you'll find out you'll find little bobby pins and hair ties you'll find screws and nails you'll just find all these little knickknacks that you've been wondering like where the hell have they gone to you'll end up finding them and it's good to just have a little container on a window seal somewhere and you just collect them as you go you pick them up when you see them and you just put them in there they're useful items that you're not going to want to throw away obviously they were lost for a reason you were once using them so that's how they got lost so obviously it's not to just throw out so just put a little acrylic container aside somewhere and collect them as you go because i guarantee you you're going to find a lot of it number 14 is pretty straightforward change your address as early as possible on all your you know sites that you use or whatever so your mail is being redirected fairly early whereas if you leave it to the last minute it's going to take a while to update and your mail will be going to your old house for quite a while afterwards so update your address on all the sites that you have your address put in as early as possible number 15 may sound like a bit of a scary one but it's kind of just a harsh reality of the world is i know you've just moved into a new house and everything but change your locks because you don't know who has access to your new house you don't know who had access in the past you don't know who has keys to your house you literally you just don't know and you can never be too safe so i would advise changing your locks making sure like a next door neighbor that used to mind the dog or something like that doesn't have access to your house because you never really know someone's true intentions and i would just rather be better safe than sorry you know what i mean so i would advise changing your locks Number 16 is as soon as you find out that you're moving, save up all of the newspaper that you get, all of the junk mail that you get, just save it all up and put it to the side because it'll be really useful for packing fragile items later on. Number 17, if you don't have newspaper to pack fragile items, it's okay because you can just use clothes. So be really resourceful of what you do have. Use all the linen you have, the socks you have, the clothes you have. Just use that as newspaper to protect fragile items. And you're also packing two in one, so even better. Number 18, if you have furniture that is screwed together that you need to unscrew to move, make sure that you get all those screws and bolts and whatnot, whatever it consists of, to be put back together and put them in a Ziploc bag, label the Ziploc bag and tape it to the item that it came from. That way you're not losing any of the screws and you're not wondering where it went when you're trying to put it back together and you're not left worried when you put back together one of your tables and you realise the screw is missing and you're wondering at what point it's going to fall apart. It's really important to just tape the Ziploc bag to the item that it came from. That way you know exactly where each and every single one of those screws are and that nothing will be lost. Number 19 is the exact same thing goes with cords. So if you have a bunch of cords that go to the TV, put those cords in a Ziploc bag and tape them to the TV. That way you're not losing any of the cords in the move. A lot of people suggest putting all of your cords and wires and all the electronic stuff like that in one big box. I think that's a rookie mistake personally a lot of people suggest that but I think it's a bit silly because a lot of the time you'll see a cord and you simply just won't know where it's from what it goes to what's not having power because the cords missing it's so very easy to forget what cords go to what and it makes life just that little bit harder so you'll just end up having these bunch of cords where you're like don't know where it came from don't know what it plugs into it's just silly 
unless you want to label every single cord and I personally don't so I would suggest putting it in a ziplock bag labeling it and sticking it to whatever the appliance is that needs that cord number 20 is roll your clothes don't fold them I'm sure that you've heard this a million and one times but it's true if you roll your clothes you'll save a lot more space than if you fold them so there you go number 21 is use every inch of space that you possibly have so a good example for this is say you have a nice pair of boots that you're just gonna squash in any old box and just call it a day it's a lot better say if you stuff those boots with all your socks or some t-shirts or something one that's holding the shape of the boot so it doesn't get squashed in and all bad you know if you know you know like Shoes can lose form pretty easily and they will never be the same again. So one, it's keeping the structure and two, again, it's packing two things in one. So even better, it's saving space and you don't have to find a place to stuff all those shirts and socks later on because they're already in something. Even better. Number 22 is pretty straightforward. Use every bag that you already have. Don't go out and buy or get a million and one boxes if you've already got plenty of bags, suitcases, boxes, tubs, containers, backpacks, handbags, all of that sort of stuff. If you've got a bunch of that, pack as much as you can in those items. You'll be saving yourself a lot of space and you'll be saving yourself buying or picking up a bunch of boxes that you won't end up using. Number 23 is to take photos of areas that you have set up. So if you have a bookshelf that's set up a way that you like it and there's decorative pieces on it and you want to resemble that in the next house, take a photo of it so then when you're in the next house you can remember exactly the way it was set up. So you're basically just taking a photo of your befores so you can remake afters. Number 24 is a little bit annoying but again it is what it is. I would advise cleaning your new place. What the heck is outside my window? I would advise cleaning the new place that you're moving into. I know it may look clean, but you don't know who cleaned it and if they actually did a good job. So I would go through and clean your new place before you move everything into it, like vacuuming and wiping down the surfaces, wiping down the toilet, just stuff like that. I would advise doing yourself so you know in your heart that you did it and you did it well and you're not worried about what was there before. Number 25 is to make sure that you have snacks and drink left out on the counter on the day of the move so that way that you're able to snack throughout the day and actually get some energy in because moving requires a lot of energy so you need to replenish as much of it as you can. So it's really important to eat throughout the day when you're moving. A lot of the time you'll get sidetracked and you won't even think about eating and by the end of the day you'll be absolutely gutted because you didn't eat anything. So it's really important to keep like snacks out on the counter just to kind of remind yourself as you're walking by like, oh yeah, I should probably eat something now. Or, oh yeah, I should have a drink now. It's really important. Number 26 is to cut handles into boxes that don't have handles. It will save you a lot of strain on your back when you're trying to carry boxes from the bottom and it's just so much easier. Like, why wouldn't you? Would you rather have handles or no handles? Like, obviously handles. Number 27 is to actually try and use as many small to medium boxes rather than large boxes. I know it just seems easier to use large boxes because you can fit more in them, but then try lifting them up you'll struggle you'll realize that stuffing a big box to the brim how are you going to transport it now you didn't think that far did you it's a lot easier to just use small slash medium boxes they're still going to be heavy when you stuff them to the brim they're still going to be heavy little boxes but it's not going to be as hard to carry as stuffing a one by one meter box with all of your dishware and then trying to lift it and being like oh shit, yeah uh, that's not going to happen you know so just, I know it seems silly, but stick to small slash medium boxes. It will save you a lot of back strain in the long run. Number 28 is something that I've always seen my mum doing whenever we've moved. I don't really know the science behind it, but for whatever reason it's always worked for us, is all, any sort of like mirror you have or glass you have, so like say you have a picture frame, you know how it has like the glass cover and stuff, for whatever reason, I've always been told to tape 
an X over it. So just get tape and tape an X over the picture frame, over the mirror, whatever it is. Something to do with if... I don't... I can't remember exactly what it is. I don't remember if it's something to do with if it shatters, the tape holds it in place so it doesn't go everywhere or it helps it not shatter in the first place. I can't exactly remember the science behind it, but I've always been told to do that ever since I was little and I've never broken anything from doing that, but I've seen other people break picture frames from not doing that. So I don't really know. I don't really know anything behind that, but just do it I guess. Better safe than sorry? I don't really know. Number 29 is that if you have things that open, use tape to close them. So like a fridge or something like that. Don't just transport the fridge willy nilly. Use tape to ensure that the door stays closed and doesn't fling open. Same with like cupboards or cabinets or anything like that you're moving. Just tape them closed so they don't fling open when you're moving them. Number 30 is to put paper or plastic plates between ceramic plates. It'll help them not break and it's good cushioning. Number 31 is similar to that and it's to put coffee filters between bowls. Same sort of thing, it'll help them not break and it's good cushioning and you know, coffee filters are relatively cheap so like why not. Number 32 is don't bother unpacking all your drawers if you know that you're going to pack them exactly the same way. If you have a drawer that has all of your tops or something in it and you've already gone through and culled the tops that you don't need but you plan on packing the tops exactly the same way in the next house, don't unpack them, it's just a waste of a box. So what you would just do is you just take that drawer out and cover it in saran wrap or plastic wrap or cling wrap or, god there's so many different names for that, but whatever, cover it in plastic and just transport it individually. It'll make it a lot easier if all the drawers are out, carrying the actual dresser itself because then it's just the bones, it doesn't have any of the drawers in it. and you don't have to worry about repacking it later on. You can just take the plastic wrap off it and stick it back in and done. Don't bother unpacking the drawers if you don't need to. Number 33 is if you're worried about having movers be intrigued by your items and you're too scared to put valuables in boxes and having movers move them, just mislead them by your labels. So say if you have a box that has a bunch of your jewellery in it that you know is worth a lot of money, then don't write jewellery on it because that will entice movers that aren't who they say they are and aren't as loyal as they say they are. So it's a lot better if you just write something like DVDs or something like that where it's just like, oh that's boring, who cares? Mislead them. But however, on the same box put a symbol that you know means that's not what's actually in there. So if it's like a little star or if it's a little circle somewhere, just make sure you put a symbol on it that you know means there's actually something else in there. Number 34 is right on every single side of the box. I know that seems laborious and a waste of ink or whatever, but the worst thing is when you've moved into a house and there's a bunch of boxes everywhere and you have to move the boxes left, right, center, upwards, downwards, I don't really know. But you have to spin the box around a bunch of times to find where the label is. Just write on each side of the box just so you know straight away like, oh, that's a kitchen box and it has such and such and such and such in it. You know, it just saves you a lot of time. 35 kind of goes along with the one I said before. It's just don't pack what you don't need to pack. So if something's already packed for you, just plastic wrap it. Don't bother unpacking and then repacking it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a chest of drawers this time. It could literally be the thing that you put your cutlery in. I don't remember what that's called. Is it just like a cutlery holder? I don't know. But just wrap that up in plastic and then just transport it and then unwrap the plastic and just put it straight in your new drawer. That way you don't have to unpack all your spoons and then repack all your spoons back in. It's just done for you. 36 is more so for like renters or apartment renting people. What? <laughs> it's basically just take videos and photos of how you left the place that you're moving out of so that way people can't come back at you and say that you did this damage and you made that damage and blah 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 when it's not true. It happens all the time, all too often and all too frequently, so I would play it safe and just take videos and photos of how you left the place. So if someone makes a hole in the wall afterwards and says that it was actually you, you can show them, no, this is how I left the place when I moved out, can I have my deposit back now please? 
You know what I mean? Just like, you, if you know, you know. 37 is the same thing. Take photos and videos of the place before you move into it. So if there's damage already done when you've moved into it, you'll have video evidence of that. So when you move out, they can't be like, well, you made this hole in the wall in the kitchen. And then you can show them the video and be like, well, actually, I hadn't even moved in at this point. This is a video from such and such time. And you can clearly see that I had moved in with that damage already done. It's just a lot easier and a lot less hassle in the long run fighting back and forth between who's, who did what and who didn't and it's your word against theirs and no, you have video and photo evidence. It's crucial. Number 38 is to keep all important documents on your person and not tucked away in boxes with movers. I know you probably don't want to carry all those documents with you but it's really important just keep it in like a file holder and just keep it in your car or something like that because if a box for whatever reason gets lost with a mover and that just so happens to be the box of your birth certificate social security number and all sorts of stuff like that then you can imagine how much life's gonna suck so it's just really important to keep all your personal documents on you because if that box did get lost and someone found it, they have all of your information. Number 39 is measure everything. Okay, sounds silly, just measure everything. If you've measured something and you go to the new house and you measure out the place that you thought you were gonna put it and you realize it's not gonna fit at all, just get rid of it. There's no point in moving it all the way to your new place if you're not going to have a place to put it. So just get rid of it. Number 40 is a bit of a weird one. I've never personally tried this myself but I can't see why it wouldn't work and it's basically you know when you have furniture on a carpet for a long time and it leaves dents when you move it well put a bunch of ice cubes on those dents and let them melt and then get a spoon and push up the fibers and it should look back to normal or at least relatively back to normal and not like there was oh there was a massive couch here you know what I mean if anyone's tried that let me know if that actually works because I've never tried that myself Number 41 is in the odd chance that something does shatter, so like a mirror or a piece of glass or anything like that, use tape or anything, you know, sticky like that and just go over the area with it and, you know, with tape, like just press it down and keep going over the area with it to pick up all the little shards that you couldn't see with your eyes and that didn't get picked up with the broom, just so you avoid injuries, you know? Number 42 is take a picture of the back of your TV before you move. That way you know where all of the wires go in advance and you don't have to go to your new house and be left wondering where did this wire plug in again and what was it for? You'll know. Number 43 is if you have like a normal opening door, not like a sliding door like mine, and it has like, you know, the handles on each side and that little pushy thing. You'll see a photo of what I'm trying to say here, but basically just put a rubber band around it, there'll be a photo of it, and just do that to like basically all the doors that you know you're going to be going in and out of, in and out of, in and out of, and that way when your hands are full and that door just so happened to close or someone closed it, you can just push it open and it will open. You don't have to worry about trying to balance things and trying to open the door handle. You'll just be able to nudge the door back open. Number 44 is if you're moving with a dog, make sure you put their water bowl and food bowl in the exact same room in the new house and the old house. So say if you kept their dog bowl slash water bowl in the kitchen, make sure it goes in the kitchen in the new house. You need to try and keep as much routine as you can with your dog and that way it helps them be not so anxious and it will help them be not as destructive when they're stressed out. So. If you're moving into a new house, don't just randomly put your dog bowl in the laundry when you used to have it in the kitchen, put it in the kitchen. And if you used to have it in the laundry, then put it in the laundry. Just try and keep as much routine as you possibly can for your dog to avoid destruction and anxiety. Number 45 is when you're moving out of a house and you take a nail out of the wall, try and fill that hole with soap, like a bar of soap. Or toothpaste if you don't have anything proper on hand with you or you don't want to risk ruining the wall by being a not so handy person and getting it everywhere just try and use some toothpaste or dove soap it might work work temporarily and you can probably get away with it number 46 is pack your plates vertically I don't exactly know why this is I've heard a few people say that before I don't really know the science behind it or anything like that but 
I've heard a lot of people say it, so it must mean something. So I guess just pack your plates vertically. Number 47 is have a yard sale before you move and get rid of as much as you can. Like I've said earlier in the video, cull as much as you can, but also you're making a little bit of money back, so it's not bad. Number 48 is to have all your packing essentials in a basket that you can just move room to room when you're packing everything. So say you're in the lounge room and you have a basket with all your tape and your scissors. Sorry. All your tape and your scissors and your labels, your sharpies, whatever you have. Make sure that it's all in a basket that's obvious access that you can just move from room to room. So when you go to the kitchen, you just take the basket with you and everything that you need to pack the kitchen up is there with you. Number 49 is utilize drink bottles. I know this isn't a drink bottle, but you know, we can just pretend right now that it's like a normal size drink bottle. This is obviously not that, but utilize drink bottles. They obviously have space inside them, so utilize that. You could put like one of those spice things in it. You could put like all the random sauce packets that you have from all the takeaway places that you have sauces saved up from. Or you put your sunglasses or something in there, something fragile like that, that you're a little bit worried of packing in the first place. Just put it in a water bottle. And again, you're packing two things in one. You can also put your makeup brushes in there, or like your toothpicks or something, you know, something just utilize all the space you have basically and water bottles are pretty looked over when it comes to that and i think they're a pretty good way of storing sunglasses just saying if you don't want your sunglasses to like why can't i speak if you don't want your sunglasses why if you don't want your sunglasses to break then just put it in a water bottle if it's wide enough granted don't try and shove your sunglasses in a bottle that that lid isn't wide enough to fit one in there and then you just can't get them back out again if you know what i mean use a hydro flask if you're a visco girl put your sunglasses in there i don't know just just thoughts like that makeup brushes it's a good story number 50 goes along those lines but with pots and pans or not so much pans because they're flat aren't they but pots just put a bunch of your spices and stuff like all those little kitchen knickknacks that are very small just put them in there why not you know utilize space number 51 is for those pots that you want and pans i guess for that matter that you want the lids to stay with just rubber band the lids on so they don't go anywhere, they don't break, they just stay on the pots and pans and you don't have to go searching for them later on because they're already there. Number 52 is put your toaster inside a plastic bag. When you're transporting it, you can put that plastic bag in a box or whatever or however you want to pack. You'll thank me later when you pull it out and you'll realise how many crumbs fell into the plastic bag. It's a toaster. What were you expecting? Number 53 is pack your boxes according to your shelves, if that makes any sense. So if you're packing specifically for decor, and say you have a shelf in your house, and all the decor on it you want to redo in the next house, as well as taking a photo, like I said earlier, so you remember how it's assembled, it's also a smart idea to pack all that same decor in the exact same box and just label it shelf decor. Because then you know exactly where it all is you can just pull it out and put it back on the new shelf and then you're done it's just a lot easier if you have something that you know is going to be remade exactly the same way with all the exact same decor just put all of that decor in the exact same box and label it so and then easy you don't have to go searching for each bit of decor that you packed in 17 different boxes all around the joint it's all just right there in front of you number 54 is don't rip off the tape when you get to your house. I know it's really tempting to just rip off the tape and open the box and bring out all of the stuff that you've packed, but I would advise not ripping off the tape because that ruins the box. So I would just cut the I would just cut down the middle of the tape so it just kind of opens back up like normal, like a normal box. So then when you go to reuse it later on or if you move again, the box already has the tape on it, not obviously to use you can't just close it and it will be magically closed you'll have to put a new piece of tape on it but the tape from last time will already be there reinforcing the strength of the box so if you just kind of keep doing that the box is going to get stronger and stronger each time whereas if you rip the tape off the box the box is going to get weaker and weaker each time therefore less uses of the box and if you do what i did then you can reuse the box a lot of times reduce reuse recycle you know what i mean don't rip off the tape just cut down the middle of the box and open and number 55 last but not least is don't forget to label your boxes fragile if they are fragile i know i've seen a lot of times when i've seen other people move they'll forget to 
say they're packing all their wine glasses in one box, they'll forget to write fragile on it. They'll just write kitchen and then they'll put like an asterisk and put wine glasses. If you have movers, nine times out of ten, they're not really gonna read all the contents of the box because who can be bothered? They'll just see kitchen and chuck it in the kitchen. You need to write fragile in big bold letters so they know, oh, it goes in the kitchen but it's also super duper fragile. It's probably glasses or ceramics, you know what I mean? So just make sure to remember to write fragile on any fragile boxes. It's very crucial and for whatever reason quite commonly looked over and I don't quite understand that. But you know, you do you. But anyways, that's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed those 55 moving hacks. I didn't just because that means that after I finish filming this video I have to get up and continue packing for my move. I hate moving with a passion. I really, really hate moving. Okay? I super duper hate packing. Okay? But you know, that's my problem, not yours. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something new when it comes to packing or that I maybe helped you and made your move just that little bit easier or more convenient. Whatever it may be, I hope you enjoyed the video. Alrighty guys, that's it for today's video. Be sure to give it a like and share this video. If you're new to the channel, you should join the family by making the red subscribe button down below turn grey with the extra addition of the letter D at the end as well. I make new videos hopefully every Saturday. I'm trying. So be sure to turn on post notifications to be alerted of those up and coming videos as well as following my social medias to be alerted on there also. Thank you guys so much for watching, I love you and don't forget, everything's going to be okay in the end and if it's not okay, it's not the end. Cue the outro. Some things never change, never change, mm -hmm. you'll break your back to make me feel it.